In this video we're going to look at the aerial imagery that was taken in the Gulf of Carpentaria to monitor the mangrove dieback um, from 2015. And we're going to look at some of the other ways that you can use this imagery to understand what's happening in the Gulf of Carpentaria and to also find other uses for that imagery. In particular looking at things like uh, seagrass, fish traps, um, rubbish, they're all potential things that you can find um, along this coastline and uh, in this particular tutorial we're going to show how to best use this, the tools that are available to analyze this coastline. So first off we're going to start with looking at there's two main ways of accessing the imagery. One is via a map-based interface, and that's this one. So here we have two layers. The first is uh, the dots, which are actually really close together. Each of these corresponds to where there was a, a photo taken as part of the survey. You can click on any one of the dots uh, to see the imagery from 2017 and 2019. So that's one way of directly finding imagery. And the base layer that we have here is low tide sentinel to imagery. And if you turn that off, you can see the underlying Google imagery, which may or may not be uh, better depending on the area. The sentinel imagery is really designed to see further into the water column, but it is not as high a resolution. So if we zoom back out again, on this map you'll notice a few things. First off, there's a few different regions which have been marked off. These are these labels here, they correspond to regions of the Gulf. Um, and the imagery at the moment is organized by those regions. There's also a number that's associated with each location and that corresponds to the shore FID. Um, you can see the number here, 1800, 2000. Basically it starts at zero at this end and then increments progressively until you get to 19,000 on that end. And this ID is going to be key to matching up images with their locations. Essentially the survey, what they did is they worked out the average track that they're going to do their surveys and then each part of the survey was broken up into these 100 meter segments um, and given an FID and that allows them to basically align the imagery from one year to the next. If they take uh, the imagery close to the, the closest image to that location is the one that's associated with that shoreline ID. And each of the file names you can see here, the file name there, starts with its shoreline ID or shore ID. So you can see this one is 9402. And on the map you can see it's uh, there's the 9400. So you can basically look around the imagery and if there's features that you are particularly interested in, you can click on them and have a look. That's one way of navigating the map. And uh, we might have uh, an example where we're actually interested in identifying one particular location, what the, um, what's of interest actually. Yeah. It goes down here. Um, for example, we might be looking at the imagery here and see this green strip and be thinking perhaps this could be seagrass maybe or perhaps it could be some form of very sparse mangroves and so we can simply click on the imagery have a closer look and here we can actually see that that green strip is this all these young mangrove forest um, throughout here. So from that perspective, this green strip is actually mangroves. There's other interesting things that we can see along this section. If 
I find the right imagery. Is here we can actually see the remnants of um, fish traps. So I'll go to. So here we can actually see these fish traps, um, which are quite isolated. Um, and so there's lots of features that you can find in the imagery that certainly is not obvious from the satellite imagery. So if we turn, we look at those two sets of images, you can't see the fish traps. And that's one of the advantages of having that close in imagery taken from a helicopter along the shoreline. The other thing to consider is that this is the sort of average track of where uh, they tried to fly the helicopter. However, in practice, sometimes the helicopter is further out than that or it's closer in. And so this is just an approximate location. Um, that's Keep that in mind when you're actually referencing um, really accurate items, like if you're trying to narrow down specifically where a particular pixel on, say, a satellite image, what, what it corresponds to, then you'd look at the image and then align that view with the satellite imagery. The second way of looking at the imagery is as a gallery. So if we bring this up, this is actually the uh, download section for the data set and you can download the data set. There's some preview maps. There's a comparison between the original full resolution images and the compressed versions which are made available through this website. And there is the images which are the ones which are linked to from the map. They're organized into scenic photos which are photos that um, provide just general background information on how the surveys were done and what interesting other things that could be found. So we can see here, this looks like those fish traps that we were looking at before. And there are the survey images themselves, 2017, 2019. They've been organized into these folders which correspond to each section. Um, one of the problems that we did when we organized this is some of these folders have up to 5,000 images in them. So they can be, can take a long time if you're trying to scroll to a specific location. The other view here is you can use this gallery view on the top right with the four little windows views. And that allows you to see these images uh, larger when you're scrolling through them. So this mechanism here, this view and the other view, you can select individual images um, and then you can download them. Or if you really want to download the whole region, you could select all the images and download them but just be aware that that'll be a um, multi-gigabyte download. Or you can use them directly off the web um, through various ways of browsing through them. So if we go back to the gallery view here, and um, let's say we were looking through these views, and let's say we were looking for um, rocky reefs. So these look like potential rocky reefs. So we can have a closer look at that image. And then we can scroll through them left and right using these arrows. And when to know which direction you're moving in, it's um, you should consider looking at this shoreline uh, ID here, which is 5826. And as you can see, as I go this way, it's incrementing. Now, if we go, okay, well, where is this image? Um, well, the easiest way is to go and look back at the map. So I'm going to separate this, split this view into two and have the map on one side and the images on the other. And here we can see 5,828. So if we zoom out,
All right, so we can see that we're actually here on the map. 5,828. So we can see that these features here are what we're actually seeing in this imagery. And as we move along, clicking this way, where our numbers are incre incrementing, and so we're actually moving along this line. And so eventually we should come to another section of rocky reefs. And there they are. And we can see them there. Okay, now if we wanted to create a data set that was going to use these IDs to record various features that we had of interest, um, then we can go back to the original data set, um, go to the gallery, which is the same as where the data download is, download the database itself. Now there's two forms. In one form is the shapefile, which is used to drive the map that we were using before, or we can download the original data, which came from the project team. So in this case, I'll download the original project data, and it looks like I've downloaded it already. Yeah, I'll replace it. Now, if I open that, uh, here it is open. Okay, I'll bring this maps back up, make this a bit smaller so we can see everything at once. Um, so this has a couple of different tabs. I'll just temporarily make this larger. In this tab, it has the actual locations and the shore FID, which is what we were showing on the map and on the images. There's various observations that have been recorded along those transects. Um, and then there's also the actual information about the dieback of the mangroves. Um, in our particular case, we're interested in mapping additional items which haven't been mapped in the original data set. So we're going to copy this locations of all the shore IDs and uh, make a new tab. And then we're going to, let's say we we're looking for seagrass, right? And we're going to record whether seagrass is present or not at the various different IDs. And we'll use this as, say, a validation data set to understand um, satellite imagery. So in this case, we might start with um, picking a location that we're going to do some analysis. And the challenge here is that not every image is going to be suitable for validation because of the position of the imagery. So if we look at, like, if I'm looking at this imagery, I'd probably say this looks like seagrass. Um, and so we need to go to, let's say we start at 5,600. So we'll close this, scroll to 5,600. Bring up that image. So we're here. And then on our record keeping, we would want to go to 5,600. Okay. Um, now the question is, is there seagrass? To me, that looks like very sparse seagrass. The thing to remember is that the satellite, the helicopter is actually looking inwards and so this potential seagrass meadow is actually not in view we're mainly looking at this sandy area um, and so sometimes you need to look through the various imagery uh, so here we can actually see there's the meadows themselves the very dark features at 5605 
um, and so maybe we would have some sort of convention that we would make up for this data set. Maybe we'll have uh, one means that we can see seagrass um, and maybe we'll just record presence because some images we can't see seagrass just because we're not looking in the lo right location. So here we have seagrass. There we've got some seagrass. And so you could establish some workflow where you use the imagery to then look at um, and analyze features that are in close so that then we can verify, oh look, we've got seagrass. And then we can use that to have a look in the imagery of say satellite imagery to understand, okay, so that's what I'm actually seeing here. So in summary, the mangrove shoreline imagery is very useful for understanding the coastline of the Gulf of Carpentaria. In there you can see a range of different features including rubbish along the shoreline, fish traps, seagrass, obviously mangroves, mangrove dieback, um, various structures around the rivers, um, and so for any of those sorts of applications, it's a, a very valuable way of getting a better understanding of those areas. Thank you.